Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I'm going to be doing a few more amendments to my modular police station to convert the top floor and roof into a base for my super secret police. So before we get on to the build, I did want to first of all thank you for your lovely comments uh, on the back of the tour video that we did last time before my break. It's always good to take stock of the massive progress that we make in this city uh, in one go. Uh, so I'm glad that you all enjoyed that uh, a great deal as well. Uh, and thanks also for the support on my week off. It's always nice to have uh, uh, comments from you, including a few funny ones like my entire week is ruined now. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> but um, yeah, so thanks very much for all the general support. Uh, and indeed, thanks for the other uh, comments on my video video, uh, which were very much split into two camps. Half of you thinking that my little attempt at using the video video maker app was uh, a good laugh. Uh, I certainly was one of those. I thought it was really quite good fun. Uh, and the other half of you thinking it was an absolute abhorrence, uh, never to be repeated. <laughs> and I do understand that very much as well. Uh, technically, I'm quite old school with my Lego in the fact that I like things to be uh, brick based and all the rest of it. But um, in this case, I really couldn't resist getting this funky punk pirate who I think I will use as a sort of Lego-based pop star in Brick Nottingham, sort of just visiting. Maybe he'll be part of the procession uh, that's attending that uh, cinema premiere or something like that. Uh, and I also wanted to get a load of these Beat Bits, which is the fancy names for these tiles. These are the ones I used for that uh, little video. Uh, there's some more in the back, uh, because I'm going to ultimately use those as uh, vinyl records for a record shop, I think which probably isn't that original. It's probably what absolutely every uh, Lego city is going to be doing in due course because they just lend themselves so much to being uh, album covers. So I do like that idea. So we will see them again as well. So it's not been a waste of money. Uh, and they were actually reduced to £12 from £15 on the very first day of release on Amazon. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a, not a great sign uh, in my mind for the success of this line. But you know, as a Lego um, video maker, content provider, I think it's important for me to try these things as well. So I think it was well worth the investment. Anyway, uh, all I've got to do now is resist the massive urge that I have instinctively with my very sort of collective nature to go ahead and buy the other five of these, uh, the 12 bandmates, uh, and indeed collect <laughs> all of the beat bits. Uh, but I'm really trying to resist that temptation. My name is Robin and I am a brick addict. It has been, well, quite a few days, probably about five days since my last build. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could I could spend a lot of time and a lot of money getting all of those, but I really don't think I will, partially because the worst ones in my mind in this line, like the uh, kind of horse-headed pop star, oh, they're just horrid. <laughs> I really don't like them at all. So in this particular case, uh, I don't think my collective bug is going to take full hold. Uh, but anyway, I may get one more of these, uh, a different one, uh, and a couple of the bandmates, but I definitely won't be getting the whole lot. Anyway, I've witted enough. Uh, I'm back, and I'm going to start, as I said earlier, with this. Of course, this is the second video in which we've been making amendments to the latest modular, set 10278, Police Station. Uh, and in the first one of those videos, which I suggest you catch up on if you haven't watched already, uh, we decided to turn the entire top floor uh, and indeed the roof above it into a super secret police <coughs> base. Now, uh, I'm a bit confused with what's happening with my videos recently in that every time I say super secret police, <coughs> yep, that logo and a siren comes on. Uh, and indeed, in real life, uh, super secret police <coughs> vehicles have been driving past my window with their sirens wailing, I think to try and intimidate me. Uh, I think that my videos might be being monitored or even censored. So I'm a bit concerned about what that means. I think the, uh, well, you know who, uh, think I'll say really bad things about them and they're trying to stop it. Uh, but I won't be stopped. Uh, as I said last time, in my mind, the super secret police are a highly skilled crime fighting unit 
which are completely awesome with loads of inappropriately sized guns and gadgets and can't help but make any situation they attend much, much better. Uh, that said, I'd better move on to the build before I get myself into any real trouble. Uh, so anyway, a summary of what we did last time. Uh, there was a few things. One, we did lots of little changes on the inside just to make it a bit more decorated and a bit more interesting. Uh, but bigger ones we did, we moved the whole thing forward on its base plate because uh, you can see that the uh, pavement's a lot smaller here. We added a lot of detail onto the side, uh, and that's just because that side is going to be open, uh, the end modular, if you will, so I did some uh, adverts on there. And also, we added a huge, super-secret police... <coughs> see, there it goes again. 10th Division sign to the outside, and indeed the inside. Uh, and just uh, as proof of how well-trained they are, they've even got it covering most of the window. Uh, they haven't even got the appropriate sized sign. Uh, now, last time, one of the comments that you suggested was having these wonderfully bright lights, which really make their presence in the city completely subtle, <laughs> I'm sure you'll agree, uh, go all the way around the outside. So one change I've done already is add a few modified bricks in here, just so I can add two one by six plates, Ooh, get it the right way, uh, with more of those lights on, because that's the only way we can really do it. And yep, well done for your bedoying. That is a great improvement indeed. So I really like that. Thank you for that suggestion. Uh, another one that you gave me from last time was just to make some small amendments to the kind of bushy trees out the front. Uh, and they were just to cover up the small axle hole. So I do really like these small suggestions as well as the bigger ones. And I thought I'd try it with one of the new flower pieces, but to be honest, it's still got a hole in it. It is slightly smaller. Or maybe I could try a green one by one round plate as well, which I'm gonna try and do on camera. It's gonna be really difficult. Or it'll go in straight away, who knows? Or I'll ping it across the room. <laughs> nope, it's not going in. Uh, Oh, there we go, that's strangely tricky. And if we compare the two, I think I do actually prefer it with the more normal stud in it. So I'm gonna change both of those as well. Uh, so that will be slightly improved, so thanks for that. Uh, and then one of the other suggestions, that was also really simple, but to be honest, I hadn't thought about it uh, when we were talking about this very plain side, was to add windows into the ground floor because one of my minor complaints with this set was that because this donut shop was so sort of long and narrow, it was very sort of dark and featureless. So why not have some uh, windows in this wall on the ground floor? Now that will mean I have to either move uh, or push upwards or just remove entirely one of these adverts but I think some windows in this wall would look good so we've got white frames at the front we've got brown frames at the back so what I've got is some one by four by three windows in white and I've also happened to have some already in brown so I can kind of try both of them and kind of have maybe kind of a pair of them down here just to give a bit of interest so that's probably the first amendment I'm going to stop uh, and do next okay so I've ripped out this uh, kind of large section of wall uh, just to put in some windows and I've played around with different spacings and I have, think having kind of both of them clustered up more towards one end looks a bit better so we can look in one uh, and see the lady working and another for the customer and I tried it with white as well as brown uh, but I figured that brown looked a little bit better in that it's closer to this brown window uh, and this brown stripe is uh, something for it to tie in with. Uh, so I quite like that. So I obviously have to fill in all of these gaps with light bluish grey bricks and I think I'll keep the beach party uh, advert on the wall somewhere like that. And this one, I don't know, I think I might get rid of this because we've got the really big uh, treads tuning advert above there anyway and this can go somewhere else in my city, this Bob Fizz's soft drink sign. And then I can put that back on as well. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Let's see how it looks uh, with the rest of the grey bricks. All right, so here we are with the windows in. And I think they're looking pretty good, actually. You can see through the back one to the proprietor and all the produce and stuff like that. Uh, and if there was a customer, you'd be able to see them through that one without them being too symmetrical or anything like that. 
yeah, I think that looks good. So thanks for that suggestion. Uh, and when I put on the next floor, which I'll do again for you now, actually, uh, we've got the big, big advert board. I did think there was quite a large section of wall that still didn't have anything on it. And that's why I've added this bracket piece, just because I don't have any modified bricks in this color and I don't want to sort of ruin the inside perspective. Uh, but I did think there was room to put back that soft drink sign. Uh, and I've done it there just so it's kind of all randomly placed and nothing's too much in a row with anything else because we don't want a, a great big column of things all sort of uh, lining up on one side. But I think that looks suitably good and it actually adds a little bit more 3D uh, texture to it as well with that kind of minor shadow line around the edge. So that looks really good, I think. Thanks for all of those improvements. Uh, but now I'm going to push all of that to one side because we're going to focus on the real meat of the day which is the top floor and the roof. Uh, and the top floor has obviously got that uh, big 10th division board on the inside as well. Uh, and some people, well, quite a few people actually, really didn't like the way it overlapped the windows on the inside and the outside. And there's no way of uh, moving this into a different position to not do that. So the only alternative would be to block those windows in. Uh, but I do think it's quite funny having them uh, blocked in that way because it just shows... Uh, that the inhabitants of this building who put up that sign, them, them, uh, are highly skilled. Inept. So anyway, what I think I will do as my very first amendment to this whole floor is actually get rid of the toilet uh, because I'm not a fan of Lego toilets because they always beg the question for me, why have we only got one here? Uh, if we were going to put toilets in the whole city, we'd have hundreds of them, one in each building, uh, and I don't like the idea of that. So I'm going to remove this one and use it for something much more interesting. Uh, so let's get rid of all the uh, stuff in there uh, and make a start. All right, so I've emptied the bathroom or toilet of all of the stuff that was in there. So we've got a completely empty room to play with, but it is incredibly small as there's not a huge amount we can do. Uh, one idea I had was to turn it into an armory, so a little store for all the really big guns that the uh, super secret police use on all of their jobs, whether necessary or not. Uh, but a better idea, I think, came from one of my subscribers, which was to use it as an observation room. So I'll give them a bedoin before I forget. Thanks for that. Uh, and what I mean by an observation room is the very small room next to uh, an interview room or interrogation room, depending on how you think about it, uh, that enables the people inside it to observe what's going on in the room adjacent without being seen themselves. Uh, and if you've seen any cop drama or anything like that, you'll know that they do that by having uh, basically a one-way mirror, uh, which enables people to see from the observation room in, but not the other way around. Now, that's going to be a very hard effect to achieve uh, in Lego pieces alone, uh, but I didn't let that dissuade me from seeing if I could, uh, you know, emulate that effect in real life. So what I did was I went to eBay and discovered that you can get films that you apply to uh, your big sliding doors on the back of your house uh, to kind of reflect outdoor light and keep privacy on the inside whilst also allowing light in. Uh, and you can get very small samples of that. So that is what I did. So here is a very small portion of a film. Uh, and you can see that it's incredibly reflective. If I hold it up like that, it's probably blinding my uh, camera's light sensor, but there you go. Uh, and it's, it's not allowing us to see anything behind it. But if we flip it around, you'll be able to see that it is kind of like more like sunglasses in the fact that you can see things through it, but they are a little bit darker. So I think if I'm able to peel off a very small section of this uh, and put it onto a piece of Lego glass, then, well, we should have the same effect working on the inside of our building. Uh, and as you can see, I've tried this a few times, cutting out very small sections, because we've only got room really for a one by four by three uh, window on that adjoining wall. Uh, and it is quite hard to do a good job on. But third time lucky, I ended up with this, which is a bit fingerprinty at the moment. But nonetheless, 
we've got it stuck to there. So we've got a very reflective side uh, on one side. So let's see if we can get Robin, there we go, being reflected in that. Uh, and if I flip it over, then we'll be able to say, uh, see uh, things through it like that. So it kind of works one way and not the other. So what I'm going to do is basically deconstruct this entire adjoining wall uh, and then rebuild it with a window frame in it with that pane in uh, and then we can test to see whether it's actually working or not uh, in our police station. Uh, and then uh, we'll probably never see it again once we put the lid on. Yay! <laughs> right, so I've put that new window frame in with our reflective glass uh, and I've left off the door and some of the tiles and even a portion of this wall just so we can see the effect uh, in action and obviously it is completely pointless in a way doing this amendment just because when everything's back on it's going to be very hard to appreciate but uh, I'll demonstrate it nonetheless you know once you've started an idea you've got to pretty much follow it through so if we look through from the side that Robin is on observing I've got this little white thing on my finger so we can see it a little bit better and you can see that there hopefully moving through on the interview side of the glass uh, and if we flip it around uh, and look at the more mirrored side let's do that without smashing into the camera then you will hopefully be able to see the reflection there you go of the white piece that's on the end of my finger in the mirrored glass so it is actually working so i think that that <laughs> is probably worth the effort that i'm now going to completely conceal forever by putting these pieces back uh, but nonetheless good fun uh, and a really good idea so thanks very much for that uh, so next i think i'm going to move temporarily to the roof uh, because what I want to do on the roof is add a huge landing pad for a very exciting, uh, if overpriced, toy <laughs> for the super secret police. Now, the roof level is arguably the most boring, well, definitely the most boring, uh, of all of the ones on the police station. Uh, original build so I thought I really had to do something quite significant and quite drastic with it to reflect all the money that the uh, yeah you know who uh, spend on all of their kit uh, so it's quite a big expanse uh, so it could take quite a large vehicle like a helicopter of course um, but a helicopter I thought was a bit boring because we just get so many of those in Lego so I decided to look at the original Lego movie uh, sets just to see what the original gone I'll say it, super secret police had uh, in those sets and they had quite a few they had a huge drop ship uh, where I got my uh, sticker sheet that I've been using quite a lot and that's uh, set 70815 and that's great but it is too big for this setting uh, but I was really surprised when I saw another set being 70802 bad cops pursuit from 2014 because it must be a set that passed me by, but check that out. It's an awesome kind of flying police car in the colours of the SSP, as I would call them, to try and avoid the siren. Uh, and I just thought, wow, how have I not seen that before? Uh, and I made it a massive priority to get one myself. And, whoo, I have. Here it is. Look at that. I mean, it's just amazing. So cool, with its sort of jet thrusters on the back. All of its wonderful shaping and the uh, lovely stickers as well with logos on all over the place. Now, the original one has a uh, bad cop sticker on the back sort of windscreen type area. Uh, and I didn't want that because I don't really want bad cop in my city. Uh, but I used one of the ones, well, one of the last ones that says 10th Division because that's what I've also used uh, on my large wall sign that's the division that's based in Brick Nottingham uh, to mark this car as one of theirs so I thought that was excellent uh, and it has actually got some extra features we've got lights that kind of flip down from the underside of the front to pull somebody over presumably and these side things pop up on both sides to enable this quite uh, intricate system to pull out of the side which is Ooh, loads of sort of weapons and guns and all sorts also in the red and blue trans colors 
And, <laughs> I mean, that is heavily armed. <laughs> very, very cool, if you ask me. So clearly I haven't watched the uh, original Lego movie very recently, otherwise I'd have remembered this. But it was such a surprise to me, and so absolutely perfect as a flying vehicle that was just a little bit different, uh, and clearly a bit futuristic, representing all of the money that has been spent, uh, that I thought I just had to get that. So, here we go. Uh, it's about the right size. Arguably a little oversized, but that for me makes it even more uh, funny and appropriate uh, to fit on the roof of here. So I'm definitely going to have to remove these aerials and so on, but I'll probably be able to put them on sort of up here or something. Uh, whatever that is, part of the uh, air conditioning or something like that, I'll probably reuse on another building. Heaven knows I've got enough flat roofs, so those bits won't go to waste. Uh, but what I really need to do here is make a very large sort of round kind of helipad, uh, but for this bad boy, uh, and then also create some access, because access to this flat roof before was through this little gap here, uh, and if we look at the side uh, of the floor below, there was a ladder up from the lower roof, uh, which was basically from the ladders going to the um, apartment. Uh, and that doesn't seem appropriate at all for the, uh, yes, you know who, the SSP. Um, I think they need direct access because they're hardly going to go all the way through the regular police station at the back door, up several flights of ladders just to get to Mr. Important's uh, flying police vehicle. Uh, they're going to have direct access. So what I think I'll do is remove this ladder here. Uh, so we've still got access to the lower flat roof from the apartment, but no further. Uh, remove this gap here and have some direct access from the floor below. And I think the only way to do that is to have a trap door. So uh, I'm going to have to incorporate that. Uh, but this piece is one great big 16 by 16 plate. So I'm pretty much going to have to redo the entire roof uh, before I can even put on my new stuff. Right, so I've got to replace this 16 by 16, as we said. So how I'm going to do that is by using an 8 by 16, an 8 by 8, a 4 by 8, and then one of these 6 by 8 trapdoor kind of modified plates, combos, that opens like that. So there's a hatch into the floor below. Uh, and I was trying to sort of figure where that would go best. Uh, and I kind of thought that it would go best kind of in this section, built into this kind of uh, bit that steps out a little bit, because uh, it can fit in there very well, uh, and then would drop into the room below, because of course below this is a stairway and so on, the corridor's a bit narrow in the middle, that little tiny room that we just added the uh, one-way glass to uh, is a bit too small, so the only real big room left is the interrogation room itself. But that makes sense, because if you apprehended uh, some sort of villain, or probably an innocent person when it comes to these guys, um, you might want to bring them directly from the uh, police car, uh, into the area for interrogation. So why not have a trap door here uh, that goes in like that and drops straight into the most relevant room. That way you can bring them into the building without having to check them through the regular police uh, department uh, so you can oppress them a lot better. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what I'm going to have to do is totally take this apart, uh, put all of these plates instead, uh, make sure it's nice and reinforced on the underside and probably block up this bit here as well. Cool, old one out, new one in. So there's the old one, here's the new one. All very reinforced and looking consistent with the uh, old build, but now we've got our all important trap door that opens and stays open and won't over open because I've put one of those modified plates with a kind of a uh, rail on it. So when it closes, it only closes that far. So that is good for the reason that it drops down into the right room below, but it's also good because it gives us uh, a big space for a circular landing pad, uh, with this being the most out of the way that it can be. So I haven't changed anything along the front there at all. Cool. Uh, right, so uh, I guess I'll get on with the round landing pad next because uh, we still will need to do some amendments to the floor below this just to accommodate uh, the hatch and the lack of access here, of course. Right, so on to the landing pad. And I've added a few more plates just to strengthen it and also to provide some support for what I'm going to build above, which is just a few bricks to start with. 
and it's going to be quite cramped when it's finished but uh, I hope that it still looks relatively realistic uh, so there we are there's our supports for our slightly raised landing pad and I'm going to make that largely circular but we are going to have steps access from this corner obviously being adjacent to the uh, trapdoor to get up and down so there we go there's our raised pad so that I'm thinking would be the sort of bottom step uh, and then the next step and so on so you'd come out of there up a ladder kind of go up those steps it's not entirely realistic but then uh, the sort of lego <laughs> ladder access to all of these things never is quite perfect uh, and then I'm going to use largely these rounded slopes to make the very edge of this whole setup and you can see it's going to vastly overhang uh, the sides of this building but I think that's fine I think that will make it even more pronounced uh, and perhaps a little bit silly which I quite like because that's good fun uh, and uh, you can see I've got loads of uh, little orange trans tiles on there just to add a little bit more excitement as well so that is like that kind of around the outside then we need the uh, middle bit to be nice and bright and colorful so we know where we're aiming for uh, and I'm going to do that with four one by six yellow tiles mounted on plates one two three and four there we go so there's the top steps so you can see the step sort of up from the bottom there in fact I might add a handrail as well so I'll just uh, add I don't know one bit no maybe not there maybe there maybe there and kind of link them together with a bar piece roughly not the best handrail but sort of gives the impression of one I might be able to do slightly better with that uh, off camera but nonetheless not too bad uh, and then for the middle of the pad itself I thought I'd use one of these 8x8 modified plates just with the grill on because it does look rather fantastic and that'll just fill in this space if I can get it in there we go and that's quite a pleasing 3D effect actually because I've kind of got a cavity underneath it so you can kind of see through there maybe I should add some sort of uh, trans light blue tiles to represent some water in there or something like that but I think that looks quite good uh, and then we can use whatever clear bricks I've just got two round uh, two by two ones at the moment to kind of support the wonderful beast here uh, sort of coming into land sort of hovering above this pad uh, and yeah you can see that it's completely oversized but I think that's part of the joke so I really like that uh, and then just to finish this off we've already added this sticker of course I might just put these guns away uh, for now they are great fun though uh, I thought I might change the windscreen piece because although this is brand new and looking rather lovely uh, I thought I might want to replace it with one I got on a haul quite a way back now uh, that's actually from a space police set uh, and that is from space truck getaway 5972 and it's just got this kind of Mad Max-esque sort of sticker where they've got some uh, sort of metal grill work protecting the windscreen <laughs> and it's got bullet holes in and stuff like that. Uh, I thought that just might be a little bit more dramatic. It might be over the top, but I think it's definitely worth a try. What do we think of that? That kind of looks a bit more, you know, like it's been <laughs> ramming into other stuff. I kind of like it. So tell me what you think about that one, but I think I'll keep that to one side for now. Uh, and then it will need a pilot, of course. So I've got a member of my uh, yep, force uh, here. Uh, and I'm not going to keep the robot heads, as I've said before. So I need to find one that's appropriate. And I've got this one uh, from a series minifigure sort of space. Uh, I don't think it was space, please. What was it? I can't remember now. Uh, and he's got this side with the targeting eye on, which I think looks quite good through the helmet but it's a bit dark so I think I might go for the second head which has still got this sort of targeter eye on which I think looks very high tech and you can see that uh, a lot better and he's got the logos on his chest uh, and on his helmet so I think he'll be very suitable for the insides of here I'll keep his hands being silver just because I think 
Uh, they'll represent gloves. Obviously, there isn't a great stud connection between this helmet and this guy's head, but nonetheless, there we go. Put him in there. And now I've done the windscreen in the way I have. We can't even see him. So uh, oh, a little bit to the side there, perhaps. <laughs> but anyway, I, I love the fact that all of these details are here, hidden throughout my city, uh, just like that uh, one-way mirror uh, earlier, because, um, you know, it's kind of like Easter eggs for if you're actually here in real life, having a look around. So let's see if we mount that on there, how it looks. Put that head to one side. Hey, hey. I think that looks pretty good and swish, if you ask me. Very sort of menacing, very black and white. I love the, I love the sort of very black and white uh, theme of the uh, vehicles in this uh, range of people who I'm trying not to say the name of. And they're very uh, red and blue um, sirens there. Yeah, I think that looks really good. I think it's probably hovering about the right distance. I could have it way above, but I quite like it like that. You can just sort of see the yellow and orange of the landing pad. Uh, yeah, so I'll have to see how that looks with everything else on. But I think uh, next, what I should do is just make those few amendments to the inside to make this fully work. Uh, so what I'm really gonna do is remove all of this setup from the outside here, just this one, uh, and then add something similar uh, coming down from what will be here into there and I might need to move that window just one stud to the left to accommodate it as well so that's what I'm going to do next okay pretty easy and recycling most of the pieces that I've taken off this floor and the uh, other ones for the amendments that I've done already uh, I've managed to remove any sign of any access there uh, and just to accommodate a ladder going down into here which I'm going to use a brown one just to sort of match the decor of the room. Uh, I have actually had to move this sort of curved uh, inverted slope uh, or concave slope uh, along a bit. So I've removed a six long tile and replaced it by a four and a one. Uh, but I think that still works. Uh, and that ladder goes down uh, right pretty much to the tape recorder. So yeah, it's kind of cramped and gets in the way, but you know, hey ho, it's only so much space we can work with. And there's Robin still checking out his reflection uh, in the one-way mirror. So that's good. Uh, so I can put that on there. And I think we are done. So now when I put on the roof, so I'm just going to take off the flying car for now. Uh, yeah, get it right. That way around. Then that will still fit on. And when we open up the hatch, it'll go straight onto that ladder. Hopefully the light is getting in there and you can see that. It's very hard to tell from where I am. Uh, but that allows you access to come up that ladder, make a hop onto there, uh, and onto the platform there. So I think that works. Looks pretty good anyway. Intricate. I do need to do something with that, I think. It's not quite right, is it? Uh, and then we've got our wonderful flying thing here so i do need to populate this top floor now uh, and these are all the super secret police damn i said it again <laughs> that i've got so far um so i've put one in the vehicle up there i will be doing some scenes around my city so i don't want to use all of them at all uh, in fact, fact that's why i'm going to use all the ones with the body armor so i've got four with helmets and body armor yep and then maybe some without body armor which might be the drivers uh, for those people because I want to do some uh, vehicle scenes I think uh, and that leaves us with three with the caps on so they might be the ones in the office so let's see I've got some heads here I've got a female head because it's not just uh, guys that are in this elite force haha <laughs> elite yeah not quite uh, what else have I got I've got a guy with some shades on Give him a cap as well. So it seems they wear their caps when they're in the office. Uh, and a third one here. And he's just got a relatively normal disgruntled face on. And I thought one of them could be sort of carrying his helmet because I just happened to have one spare helmet with the right logo on. So I thought I could give him that, for example. And I can just have them milling around that top floor where that detail, again, probably won't be seen at all. <laughs> Or maybe I'll have them picking a fight with the regular police when I get back to Brick Nottingham. Cool. So I think this needs to go on top of the building that we did the amendments on earlier. Uh, and then the whole caboodle 
needs to go into Brick Nottingham. I have to remember to put the advert back on the side as well. Can't remember where I put that. Uh, oh, and I've even got these aerials and things to do something with as well. So I'll try and put all our little bits back together uh, and see what I can come up with. But I think the improvements have made this building a lot more fun. Okay, so while we've still got a bit of room down here, I thought I'd summarise what we've done today. We've added three of the 10th division to populate this area. Uh, it's a hive of activity now, waiting for an unfortunate arrival for the interrogation room, it would seem. Uh, we've got the ladder now up to that top floor. We've also got rid of the toilet to make it uh, uh, an observation room that we can see through the one-way glass. Uh, and then if I put on the roof, which hopefully won't collapse with everything that's balanced on it, into position, you'll see that we've got the wonderful flying police car from that set that we looked at earlier on its landing pad, hovering above it, no expense spared. I've put the aerials back on. Uh, we've got the trap door that links the two areas together. Uh, and I think that's all looking really good. Uh, and we've removed that access up there from the civilian side, added some windows down here, some slight amendments to the bushes at the front. Uh, and I think it's ready to go back into position. Oh yeah, and some more lights there as well. Very cool. Right, so up in the Lego room now, obviously, and the building is in place and looking rather good if you ask me. I still think probably the best thing that I've done is that bright sign on the back. It's rather big uh, and rather garish and we added the extra lights this time, but I think it's just funny advertising the uh, very secret nature of the 10th division uh, very clearly. <laughs> and our new flying car, of course, on the top, looking really good actually, uh, especially as a good contrast to the uh, helicopter ambulance behind it. We really could have had too many helicopters. Uh, and I think it needs a name actually, this flying car, because I think the term flying car really doesn't do it justice. It needs a really sort of uh, fancy name, like sort of, I don't know, the Annihilator or something like that. Uh, that's definitely the name the 10th Division would give it, I think. Uh, and we've still got quite a large green area out here on the back. Uh, not so much the bit in between the railway tracks. I've kind of got a plan for this area, but more this one here. Uh, one idea that I was given last time was to kind of have uh, kind of a ramp down to a subterranean car park where uh, a vehicle from the 10th Division could be kind of pouring out on its way to the scene of a crime or something like that. Now, I can't actually go into the depths here because this is a solid table, but I could definitely do the illusion of one just using black tiles or what have you. Uh, and that might be a really good idea for a future video just to really complete that scene. But yeah, it's looking great. I love the three colours of the original modular, just sort of making this entire row next to the rail line uh, look very interesting indeed. Well, let's go around the front. Well, from the new windows on the ground floor and the repositioned adverts, all the way to the new stuff on the roof, I think the front looks really, really spectacular, actually. It really adds a lot of detail to the most plain areas, being that very large flat roof, uh, and makes the whole scene a lot more interesting, if you ask me. Uh, but do tell me if there are elements that you would have done differently, or that you would like to add to perhaps. And I think also, let's look at one of my favorite views of the city at the moment with a space tower at the end of the road. Yeah, I think that's really good. I might have to rotate the annihilator so we can see the front of it. Uh, but I think that's looking rather fantastic. Just down the road from Fast Food Corner. Very good. Uh, and we actually just caught a glimpse there of GBC, so I'll give you a quick reminder. If you want to support my GBC factory here on LEGO Ideas, do check out the link in the description below. Your support will be very much appreciated. It has reached 1,000 votes plus, but uh, we need 10,000 in total, and it's getting there a lot slower than Fast Food Corner did, which really rocketed along, which is a bit of a surprise to me, because I thought GBC was a pretty good plan. But nonetheless... Uh, if you do want to support it, 
do so. If you don't, don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there we are for our police station and our super secret police <coughs> station. Uh, and I think you'll agree that we've done a pretty good job at making those amendments, even though, well, some of the most time-consuming ones are well hidden on the inside. <coughs> So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, it will be Wednesday, so we'll be doing another brick haul. And then on Friday, we'll be going back to the fairground for another edition of Fairground Fridays. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do another new ride or stall or something like that first before doing the structural work. Uh, it really depends on the timing of the order for all of the stuff I need to finish uh, the Lego field, of course. So if I get that uh, in time, uh, we might even do a Farm Friday. Who knows? Uh, but whatever we do, I'm sure we'll have great fun. So until then, see you! <laughs>